In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the most common problems you have been having in the first episode of my series, Write Your Own Operating System Kernel. So first of all, there is one mistake I made in the first episode, so we'll go ahead and fix that first. So in the first episode, at the timestamp 302, I gave this command for entering the Docker environment. Unfortunately, the command for Linux and Mac OS is incorrect. I also forgot to include the command for PowerShell. So if you come over to my GitHub repo, link in the description, you'll see the updated command for Linux and Mac OS. Then there's the same command we have before for command prompt on Windows. And then finally, if you're using PowerShell on Windows, you'll want to use this command instead. Also, if you're using the Windows subsystem for Linux, msys or git bash, you'll also want to go ahead and use the Linux command. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're going to move on to some of the most common problems. So the first one is docker command not found. So you'll want to make sure you have Docker installed on your computer. And after doing that, you'll have to restart your terminal window before running the Docker command. Now, if this still doesn't work, you might need to restart your PC instead. So the next error you might get when building your Docker image is that the Docker daemon is not running. So make sure to actually start the Docker application on your PC before running any of the Docker commands. So on Windows, you'll just want to head over to the start menu and search for Docker desktop. And it might take a few minutes, but after a while you should see that Docker is running. So the next problem is this error where it says the Docker file cannot be empty. So this could be because you named the Docker file incorrectly. So make sure to name the file exactly Docker file with a capital D and a lowercase f, and then everything should work. And also make sure you are executing that command from within your project directory. So the next error is when you're running make and it says no target specified and no make file found. So this is similar to the previous error where you might not have named the make file correctly. So once again, you want a capital M and a lowercase f. So that should fix that problem. So another make file error is where it says missing separator. So this is likely because you are using spaces instead of tabs in the make file. And unfortunately, make files only work with tabs. So if you are using Visual Studio Code, then inside the make file, you can come over here to the bottom right and select tab size and then select indent using tabs. So after that, you can click view command palette and type convert indentation to tabs. So once you click that, all your indentation should be replaced with tabs and you'll no longer get that error. Okay, so the next really common error is no rule to make target build x86-64. So this error is completely due to the command I got wrong at the beginning of this video. So if you use one of these docker run commands instead, then you shouldn't get this problem. So another error you might get when trying to run the Docker container is invalid reference format. So if you're using PowerShell, this is the exact same as the previous error. So if you're using PowerShell, make sure to use this command instead. So for example, in Visual Studio Code, if it says you're using PowerShell, then you'll want to use this command. But alternatively, you can go ahead and switch over to Command Prompt. And if you're using Command Prompt, you can use this command instead. So hopefully at this point your building process should work fine, but when you try to emulate the kernel using QEMU, you might get a command not found error. So assuming you've downloaded and installed QEMU, you'll also have to make sure to add QEMU to your path. So if you are on Windows, you'll just have to copy the installation directory of QEMU and then search for environment variables in the start menu and go to environment variables, click path, and in here you can just click new and put in C program files kimu and click OK. And now after restarting your terminal window, you shouldn't get this error anymore. So another QEMU error you might get is could not load PC bias bias 256k.bin. So if you come over to my GitHub repo link in the description, when emulating the kernel, you'll want to try one of these alternative commands for Windows and Linux, and hopefully that should solve this problem. So the final problem you might have is using Windows 10 Home Edition. So you probably shouldn't expect things to work if you're using Windows 10 Home because many of the development features are limited on this edition. So go ahead and upgrade to Windows 10 Pro. I'm sure Microsoft offer a very fair price for that package or alternatively switch over to Linux. Otherwise, there's probably not much I can help you with. So that's going to be all for this short video. I hope I've solved any of your problems. And the next episode for this series should be out soon enough. So special thanks to the top Patreon supporters who helped make these videos possible. And I will see you all in the next episode.